Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Equalities with Fractions. Yay. The crowd goes wild. Um, we are just beginning our journey into fractions, right? We're thinking about what we've learned so far, fractions being a part of a whole. And a whole is in all, not like a hole in the ground, right? Not that one but like the part of a whole. So for example, maybe if I have the number one, well, maybe a fraction is a part of that. Maybe this is a part of what makes the one. Uh, we talk about unit fractions, right? That means there's just a one as the numerator at all times. Again, these are parts of wholes. We can see these on number lines. We can model them. We can make fractional sets, whatever it may be. So the understanding of fractions. And then today we're going to kind of dive into these fractions and what they mean when it comes to equalities. And we've talked about this with everything so far. So equalities is a review because we talk about equalities with every unit we're moving into. And if you remember, the equalities are what gets us greater than, less than, or equal to. Now, again, remember these do have names. This is the greater than one, All right? This is less than, because you do read left to right. So that's an important thing I'm always trying to push, make sure we understand that. But today we're just gonna think about like, what do we do if, if someone says, oh, well, I have one eighth and I have uh, two uh, 30 seconds, right? Like what how and where do i figure out which one is larger um so we're going to do that through a process we're going to model we're going to compare and then we're just going to use our equality so we'll make sense of that as we go we're not going to do this one that was just an example um and let's go ahead and dive into the show and kind of get going with it so here we go again remembering step one we're going to model today Step two, we're going to compare. And then step three, we just use the correct equality. So first example, let's dive into a first example. Someone says, you know what? I'm so curious. And you're like, oh, really? What are you curious about? Oh, well, I'm curious what's larger, one half or three fourths, right? So our equality is going to go in that box in between. So let's do this process. Step one, model. Now, here's the thing that's important about model. I like to do it underneath if you have space. If you don't, do it to the side. We'll do a couple examples, so don't worry. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two models, and I'm going to use fractional parts. So I'm going to put this model here, and then I'm literally going to put another model of the same size starting in the same place right next to it. This helps me compare. Okay, I'm not quite there. I'm still on step one, but this helps me compare these when I look at them. So again, I'm making two models side by side. One model is gonna show one half and the other will show a three fourths. So step one, let's do one half. So the denominator tells us how many pieces we have. We have two, so I'm gonna cut right in the middle. And the numerator tells me how much I'm going to shade in. So that means I'm going to shade in one of the two pieces. So that's what one half would look like. If I had one half of a candy bar, then I would have this half. Great. Okay. So now let's model our second fraction over here, which is three fourths. So again, the denominator tells me that I have four pieces I need to cut this into. So now again, remember if I cut left to right, like I did over here, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And for four, I'm gonna go middle, middle, middle. And again, there you have it. One, two, three, four pieces, right? Okay. And the numerator says three of those is shaded in. So one, and here's a good key. If I'm going to compare, notice over here, I shaded from the bottom up. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna start on the bottom and shade up. So there's one piece, two pieces, three pieces. So now we have this really cool model where we can just stop and look at it and say, well, which one's larger? What has more shaded in? What is a bigger fraction? And you can see here that if this was like a glass of water, 
three fourths is filled up this high and one half is filled up this high. So this is our larger fraction. So that means that one half is less than three fourths. That's the correct one, okay? So we modeled them side by side, same sizes. We compare. So I looked at which one had more shading or again, I really like thinking about it as a glass of water. So which one has more water in it? And then we found the correct symbol to put in there or equality to put in there. And we see that one half is less than three fourths. So three fourths is a bigger value. Okay, so let's try another one. And again, at any point, right, is when we do this, feel free to pause and try the problems before we finish them. And then you can unpause and see if you're right. Um, all right, so one model, two compare, and three find the correct equality. All right, well, um, let's see here. Maybe this time someone's like, oh, I have three eighths, and I want to know if that's bigger than um, four sixteenths. Okay. So this starts to get tricky as we think about as these numbers get larger, like how can we compare these with a model? So here's a step of one model. So remember, the key to this is that you're going to make two models right next to each other. And you want them to be the same size. You want them to be like starting at the same place. Like notice again, they both start down here. They both end up here. You're gonna do your best, you're freehanding. So it's not always gonna be perfect, but again, it wouldn't make sense if I did this and then this, right? Those aren't two models that look exactly the same. That is not going to work, okay? So let's erase that so we don't get confused. All right, so this first one tells me I need eight pieces, right? That's what the denominator says. So the cool tricks as we start to learn, if I'm gonna make eight, I'm going to make fours first. So if I'm going to make fours, I'm going to make half. So cut in half, half and half, and then each half again. And you will see you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, again, I'm drawing with my hands. Some of these pieces are not perfect, and that's okay. You want them to be as close as possible. All right, now I'm going to shade in three. So let's use a different color so we can see that. So here's one, two, three. So three out of eight fills up that big. Okay, let's pop over to four sixteenths. Ooh, this one's gonna be tough because it's the same thing, right? I'm gonna start with half, I'm gonna cut my half and half. And look what I'm actually doing. I'm actually using the lines from the other model to help me. So that was eight, which means now I gotta cut each one of these in half. Oh my gosh, this is tiny, 16 is small. Okay, and now I gotta shade in four of them. So let's go back and do that, right? Cause that's what this says up here. So one, two, three, four. So that goes here. So now we sit back and we compare these. And again, we're thinking about like, which one is more filled up? Which one is filled up closer if it was a glass of water? Love that scenario. I'm gonna say it like a million times. And you can see here that this is our larger value because more of it is shaded. Look, it's filled up that high where this one is just filled up to here. So, boom. So the correct equality is going to be that it's larger than, all right? Okay, we're going to try one more. I'm going to flip it just a little bit. We're going to use the same steps of model compare uh, equality, but I'm going to show you a different model, one we already know, but I'm going to just show you another way so you can think about this. So let's move on, and this will be our last one. Again, as I write it up there, if you want, pause and try and see if it works, right? And then you can see my different model as well. Use the technique that works for you. Uh, model, pair, and then equality. Cool. So uh, let's say this time, let's see here. Let's go with um, 
How about two fourths and one half? Okay, so this time I'm gonna model, but instead of modeling with rectangles, I'm gonna use the number line to model, which is something we can do. So watch how I do this. When it comes to modeling, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw two number lines right on top of each other, same length, right? Again, see that? See how they end in the same place, they start in the same place, they're the same length, so I can compare. That's what makes comparing easier and fair, is that they're the same. Okay, so now, this tells me that my number line is gonna be cut into four pieces, just like I would with a rectangle. So one in the middle, and then one, one, and there are my four pieces. And again, if you're ever struggling to see the pieces, look here, one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece, right? It's not really, you're not really counting the tick mark per se, you're just using those as markers of your pieces. All right, so let's label our pieces. Uh, this would be zero. This would be one. Same thing with the number line down here. I might as well put that in. And this would be one out of four, two out of four, three out of four, and this is four out of four, the end of it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my second, let's change colors, it's kind of boring. Take my second fraction, and you can see I'm doing one half, so I'm gonna cut this into two pieces, and I'm gonna label. Well, one out of two, two out of two. Now, here's where you can use the number line, because if I find two out of four, that's right here, and one half is right here. And if you look, they're actually in the exact same place, right? They actually are right in the same place on a number line, which means these are actually equal. And we can double check that real quick with a model. So I'm gonna do two models side by side, right? One of them is two fourths. So that's this one, one, two. The other one is half. And you can see, look at that. Yep, same place. So these ones are actually equal. But again, you could do that with a model. You could do that with a number line. So, Think about this process, give it a go, practice it out. And as always with everything in class, if you're unsure, ask questions. That's our norm, right? Ask questions until things make sense. As always, we appreciate you and the hard work that you do. And we'll see you next time.